So to recap, and I change it a little bit, uh, so everything is now commented. Apart from this main function I just saw, I'll I'll, I'll just add comments here later. Um, so in our main function now, we just have a game instance of warm game, right? And we have this loop where as soon as the uh, the user quits, we go out of the loop, we turn zero, and our program is finished. If not, we constantly ask for user input and then redraw our game. That is kind of how most games work, in fact, right? So this is easy. Um, and then the only uh, thing that we use is basically uh, a bunch of classes. And as we saw last time, we basically have this uh, base class bug. Everything that can move on our screen is a bug, or we define as a bug, um, which has a particular length and an X and Y coordinate where it can start. This is something that I added, I think, from last time. We didn't have these initial coordinates. Um, we can get the bug's x and y position, or at least the one, uh, the head of the bug, uh, and the bug can move. That's something we've seen already and that we started in the worm with in the beginning, but we abstracted this as the bug. And then we defined the worm as a bug, uh, that's what we have exactly here, um, where we defined a maximum length of the worm that we also put in the, in the constructor here, so the worm can grow up until a certain length. Um, uh, was that correct? Yes, exactly. Um, however, it's actually the maximum length to draw. Oh, this is also something that I changed. So basically, um, we don't have the length from the bug that we constantly change. The bug is uh, the max length in that case, and the worm has a certain length until we draw. That is kind of what the, ex uh, what the difference is here. And then our food, our original food that was, you know, gobbled up by our worm, uh, we read or I redefine as a beetle because the beetle is more of a bug than food, and the beetle is exactly the same as a worm except that it has a shorter length, and it can also jump to a new position as soon as it has been eaten. That is kind of what we um, define the game as. So this is kind of the 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 way we define all the data that we use. We have a bug which um, uh, uh, can be deduced as a worm or as a beetle. Worm and beetles inherit quite a bit from that bug and do their own thing also, right? That is the idea here. And then our worm game has exactly those functions that we saw before. So we have we check whether the user has quit, whether the user uh, uh, presses a key in this case, and we redraw everything. And in terms of data, our worm game has a beetle, has a worm from the player, and as a character that represents the inputs, right? So our header file is very nice, to, or I would say quite nice to read and to parse, even by people that just have to, didn't program this, but have to uh, deal with this. Then I'll open this over here. We also have uh, our worm.cpp, which basically implements everything. So there we see that um, we have in the uh, constructor of the bug, we basically can set the length to a certain length. Um, if um, this length is smaller than one, we basically say that these x and y pointers are not arrays, but are basically just null pointers to keep things safe. Otherwise, we at runtime can create new arrays. Right? This is what, what we've called up until now dynamic arrays. Right? So we can, and then we initialize these arrays to these x and y coordinates where the bug should start on the screen. We delete the bug by deleting uh, these arrays of positions for the bug, and we can get the x and y position of the heads, where we just check for this pointer being null. When it's not, then we return, um, if it is, we return zero, uh, minus 1 as an error. If not, we return the exact coordinates where the heads of the bug should be. And the bug can move which basically just takes the character for the user input, so W, S, A, D, for moving up, down, left, and right. And in that case, we basically recreate this bug of length X and then make sure that it moves in, particular, in a particular way. And that kind of does everything a bug should do. Our worm basically inherits quite a bit from that. We basically say that our worm is a bug that is 25 long, that is the max length, um, however, our max length in this case is, uh, the, uh, or that is the length that our, our bug, our worm can maximally be. 
or that is that the worm is. However, the max length here is the uh, length that we draw the worm as. Uh, so it's it is actually 25 long. However, we don't draw 25. We draw up to certain lengths, and this is this is this max length. And this is initially um, a smaller number because our worm will start as something very small and will grow as it eats more. And then we draw this worm. Um, uh, by actually drawing it on the screen. Uh, this is something that uh, the bug is not doing. The bug is not being drawn. It's moving, but it's not being drawn. Then we have for our beetle, which is a second type of bug, this jump capability. Uh, but first the constructor. The constructor is basically saying that the bug is always of length 1. So it will basically create two arrays of size 1, where the coordinates of the bug are, and we put it in this x, y, and, co and y in, uh, coordinates. And also the beetle can move, um, but in, in, not like the worm, it doesn't shift. It basically just moves to a particular direction randomly, left, right, up or down, a little bit in each uh, thing. So it moves just a little bit, as we saw uh, the last weeks. And then we can also draw it, and drawing there is easy. We don't have to draw an entire body. We just have to draw one particular thing, which is the x, y. We put a big x. Right, that's it. And we can jump to a random uh, position on the screen. That's what happens here. And then for our worm game, we do quite a bit in the in the constructor. That has to do with the end curses. So we can nicely draw things on the screen, uh, have colors, and then create our beetle and our player worm. And make our beetle directly jump to a random position somewhere on the screen. Uh, and our player starts at size 3. So the worm will be 3 long. Um, and the beetle, yeah, is a beetle and therefore is just one, one law. Our player starts at 0, 0. The beetle will start at 10, 10, but then we make it jump to a, a, a random location. And then the biggest function that we have actually is this redraw game, uh, redraw um, function from the uh, worm game, where we first clear the screen. We empty the screen by just for all columns and um, uh, rows and columns uh, um, making a new, uh, an empty character. Then we test if the beetle is being eaten by our worm. And then we move our worm. We move the beetle slightly using that function. We um, redefine the coloring of our worm and our beetle with these color pairs from end curses. And then we draw the player score at the end. And that's it. So this is basically everything that happens. Let's save that. Quit make and do this to make sure that it works right so now we have as we've seen our worm it can move around it can eat and if it eats it's a bit longer right and i made it move as you can as you probably saw he i move i made it move a little bit less because it was too too difficult i think um to yes you, you tried it out i see that already good Okay, and, and the score uh, incremented, right? So this is one of the things. Now we're going to add one little thing that is very easy because we use these classes now. Now, what is cooler in such a warm game um, than playing by yourself, playing against someone? And in that case, if you play against someone, we basically just need an enemy warm, right? So we basically just say we need two worms. One is a player warm, one is the enemy warm. And me. Um, and in terms of the of the other, I mean of, of the header file, this is everything we need. Because now we have basically not just one worm, but two worms. Those can also move, have a certain length, as we defined before. Up until now, I think we don't need to do anything here anymore. What we need to do here um, for uh, the enemy worm does not go into bug, does not go into the worm function, and does not go into the beetle function because those are already existing and taken care of. It is basically the worm game that we have to change a little bit. So instead of just uh, getting a player, also there, we basically create a new worm. Let's also start at size 3, I would say, uh, but at a completely different position, maybe completely the other side. So in that case, this would be um, calls minus one and lines minus two, right? I think is the right way. So this is the 
enemy warm at other sites. Okay, uh, and we don't call it player, but we call it enemy. Good. Um, then the rest. So I, I, that's what we create now. It's always good, and what you create, you also need to delete. So, so there we don't delete our player, but we also delete the enemy, the enemy war. That is quite easy. Now, what do we do with the enemy war? We need to redraw it at each thing, at each case, and we need to also allow our enemy worm to eat the beetle. That would be fair, right? So, let's make this a little bit bigger. So, in that case, what happens when so, when somebody ate the beetle? It's exactly the same. So if the player, um, if the the current player eats it, you basically add the length up to the player. If the enemy worm eats it, that's we could do it like this, a second test, and in that case we almost don't change anything. This could be a a very nice function actually that we could abstract. We will just do it like this. We're just copying and pasting. If the beetle is getting eaten by the enemy, then we add the enemy's um, length plus one and that's it okay the only thing that is still needing to, uh, a little bit of uh, thing is that we need to move this enemy player and there we need to create a little bit of an um yeah of an algorithm but it will be very simple so basically if we have an enemy worm that starts at the opposite side we have exactly this uh, that situation um where we, as well as the enemy, will have to race towards the beetle that is slowly moving across the screen. Uh, but hopefully much slower than, than, than we are, right? In that case, we need to just test in which direction the enemy worm needs to go. So, we will have to basically go for lots of tests. And in that case, um, the first test is if the beetle, or I would say this is the way, so think with me please. But the first thing we can go for is the x-coordinates. If the beetle's uh, x-coordinate is smaller, oops, that's a function, is smaller than the enemy's x-coordinates, what do we do then? Anyone an idea? Where do we move to? Because we can move our enemy. So what we will have is, I'll do this with, uh, with this in this case. Um, so this class's enemy will then need to move Wait, if the x coordinate is smaller, so it needs to move to to the left, no? So, I mean, basically, uh, the beetle is left of the enemy worm. So the enemy worm needs to move to the left, I would say. Um, the left was A, right? So, move left. Um, else... And then we do exactly the same for, so let's oops, do this, 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 for up, down, left, and right, I would say. So else, if the beetle's head is right of the enemies, then we need to move to the right. Right? Now, if... None of those two is the case. So if uh, the worm, the enemy worm, is exactly at the X position it should be, then it goes into the second or the, the, the third parts where we test whether the Y position is correct. So if the Y, the Y position of the beetle is smaller than the Y position of the enemy, then we need to move upwards exactly. And this is the what we defined as a W. Okay. 
otherwise uh, if it is bigger then why then I move down which is s and that's all I mean the one condition we haven't checked for in this case if it, x and y are exactly on the foot but I would say then the war the enemy worm does not need to move because it's exactly where it is okay right and um, that is what basically drives so we basically have moving our enemy we need to just draw the enemy um, which works like this as we've seen um, and what we can also do just like with this uh, uh, edge on and edge off we basically give it a color pair that I defined beforehand so this color pair in this in this case um, I believe for let's see yes color so basically we make our enemy red yellowish right so so we say this is four Oh, come there. Up. So before we uh, we draw it, we draw it in one particular color. And this is a function of uh, n curses where we say use this color, then draw our enemy, then we turn the color off. Move our beetle, turn on the color, draw the beetle, and color off again. Okay? Good. Um, I think we can we can try and see if that works. Did I forget something? No? Let's see what happens. There we... Oh! Missed the foot. Oh! There. Score one. Now our enemy worm is pretty lame at the moment. Ooh! Oh! I. Okay, our enemy worm is not so bad. But now we are in the lead, I hope. Yes. Oh. Oh. I. Uh, that was. Uh, and also here it has the advantage, as you can see. So our AI is a bit too good. Maybe we could make it uh, make make mistakes. Um, but as you can see, we are being beaten here severely <laughs> um, by by our own algorithms. You know, welcome to the age of AI. Um, so basically, our enemy worm is not bad, right? So our enemy worm is pretty good already. And the game is this way also a little bit more exciting. I hope you agree. Now, however, in terms of object-oriented programming, as you can see, in just a few minutes, I managed to copy all the worm functionality to the enemy functionality. And the only thing that really mattered was that um, we had to define how the enemy worm should move. Everything else works exactly as advertised.